Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Worship with TLC. Um, why don't we get started? Let's quiet our hearts and just um, get our hearts ready for worship.
15, verse 18 to 30. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad, because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with men is possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left all. We had to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus said to them. No one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our online worship. And every morning that we have this great privilege that we can worship together as, 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 as a whole, as, as a church family, uh, as a body of Christ. Um, and I constantly feel uh, very, very grateful for God's grace and despite this difficult situation. And again, that uh, I just cannot um, overly express my gratitude to our brothers and sisters who sacrifice their time, their practice, uh, they come here to do the recording and 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 when there is really no audience uh, and their passion is still there so i just want to give god all the glory and i want to encourage brothers and sisters to join our worship uh on time at 10 you know so that we can enjoy that the worship uh in, in spirit and truth it all together uh, as a body of christ you know and then so Although that we are not seeing each other face to face, I hope that we will be open soon. But before that, and then we continue to worship together in spirit. And I think that is continue um, to bless us and, and then that the Lord continue uh, to be pleased because of our worship. And then through singing, through prayers, and through sharing God's word that we continue to be edified. Right, so now uh, I'd like to invite all of you, let's pray together. Let's pray for God's continued guidance of, of the English ministry of TLC. And although now we don't see each other face to face, God's work is not hindered. It's, it continues. It continues to care one another and continues uh, to edify one another. And then by all means, uh, let me know if you if have any prayer requests and so I can uh, really pray for you. I can understand your needs. I can call you up and then connect you and then connect you with our brothers and sisters. And then for and then the rest of you, please uh, join one or a cup or two of the uh, weekday worship, uh, weekday uh, gathering, small groups, Sunday schools, and so that we just continue uh, to learn God's word. Right, let's go to the Lord with prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this body of Christ, uh, the church family of TLC, and thank you for the, the, the life that we share, the eternal life on heaven because of your Son, Jesus Christ, because of what he did on the cross. And not only do we share this life, but we also, uh, in unity, in obeying in your word, in obeying the commission. And then because of that, that brings us together in unity, but in diversity. And again, that the why, why we are not meeting together face to face, and then you still allow us to be connected somehow, 
and then the ministry continue, continues to go. And for the purpose of sharing the gospel, so Lord, I want to thank you. I want to pray that as the summer is near, and then that we have students who are graduating and moving on to the next stage of their life. Lord, you have been graciously watching over them, guide them, protect them, and I trust in the next stage, you continue to guide them, to protect them, even though they will be moving away from us. And then there, be, there might be some of us who are making, uh, a, you know, facing the decision-making process uh, because of the change of a stage of life. Though I pray that they will come before you and seek for your guidance. They will look for the wisdom from heaven. And then that you guide them to a path that you have, determined, you have decided for them where they are going to receive the spiritual blessings. Lord, I, although this summer may not be as busy, and I also pray for those who uh, have the summer break and that can plan out their time well, spend more time with the family, and continue to be productive. I pray for Church's Building Project. I pray that that is a, is a joyful time because we are working on together for the same goal. And you give us a different gifts and resources and people contribute different things and it was a grateful heart. Allow us to participate in a way that is pleasing to you and no one feel obligated and no one feel a burden or, or uh, unhealthy, have an unhealthy, guilty feeling for not being able to contribute more. Because Lord, you abundantly provided us. You look at our heart and may our heart and that wants to contribute to the church uh, be pleasing to you. And I also pray for our leaders to have the wisdom to guide the brothers and sisters into the building project and using the resources that you have uh, generously given to us and then put them into the rightful place. Now I pray for the national leaders, pray for our president. Now I pray that he will come before you with a humble heart and looking for your wisdom daily so he knows how to guide the, the people of the entire nation and even guide the whole world and then to go on the path of seeking the benefit of the people and to go on the path and then that your word, your will can be done. Lord, I pray that uh, our, our leaders will humble their heart and, and come before you and seek out the true wisdom and that is from heaven. I pray for the pandemic situation or in your grace. And I pray that you will uh, uh, reduce the damage that in your grace that we can gradually move on to um, to a reopened country and that is safe and that people uh, can find a work and then to sustain their families. Though I pray for the world situation and due to the, conf due to the pandemic, there are a lot of conflicting situations. The countries point finger at each other and there is just so much uneasiness which is also true in our own country. Lord, I pray that your will be done. I will pray that the people will humble and repent and come before you and ask for your power to heal the land. And so that the more and more people can get to know you and those who are suffer can be comforted, can be fed. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be guiding our worship today as we are about to share your word May the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit be truly our teacher. And I thank you and pray all of these in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. This morning, I'm going to start my sermon with a question. And how many of you out there are already a, question, uh, already a Christian? Of course, I cannot see you. But I trust that the most of our hands have been raised. And then I'm going to ask you the second question. 
And then how many of you out there is a disciple of Jesus Christ? Then I'm, there might, might be less hands than the first question. Because it's a general misconception. Misconcept. That disciple, being a disciple of Jesus Christ, seems to be a higher class among all the Christians. As a matter of fact, the word disciple originated in Latin, discipulus, it means pupil or means a learner. Literally, it is basically the pupil of a teacher. And now, being a Christian, we are all students of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore, every Christian is also a disciple of Jesus Christ. When I was little, uh, my uncle uh, owns a, a shop, an art shop in Taipei. He made um, commercial signs and then uh, exhibitions, um, displays, uh, etc. My favorite time uh, during those years was to visit him uh, during the summers and have some good time with my uh, cousins. Sometimes my uncle would hire uh, young apprentices to learn the business or, uh, and then the art. Now these uh, young apprentices, these are like, like a clock in and clock out workers because they live with my uncle's family. And they spend most of the time in the shop learning and doing the work, but they also need to clean the house uh, and even cook and then watch the kids. Um, the living in apprentices can learn from my uncle's skills basically 24-7. They did not just learn uh, the art from my uncle. They are basically learning everything from him because they live together, they share the life together. And now in Jesus' time, the word, the word disciple and can be used just to refer to everyone who responds to his words, but they can also refer to more uh, narrowly uh, those who are following in him in his troubles, especially the 12 apostles. The important distinction of disciples of Jesus Christ from the rest of the crowd is that they are based on a calling. They have been called to be a disciple. So brothers and sisters, now your becoming a, a, a Christian is also based on a call, Romans chapter 1, verse 6. And therefore, you are also, as a Christian, you are also a disciple of Jesus Christ. And knowing your identity, today I'm going to share with you the three characteristics of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Three characteristics of discipleship. First one, true discipleship demands loyalty to God alone. True discipleship demands loyalty to God alone. And in the scripture that we just read, a man comes to Jesus and asks him, good teacher, what will it take for someone like me to inherit uh, eternal life? With the Matthew, Mark, and Luke three accounts combined, we know this man was young, and we know he was wealthy, and we also know that uh, he was a ruler. Now hearing this, Jesus just basically deflects all this idle flattery and then went straight with a statement to him, no one is good. No one is good except God alone. Now be careful, Jesus' answer is rhetorical. Uh, he is not denying that uh, he is good or denying that uh, denying his de deity. Jesus is basically actually is saying, is telling him, the person who you are talking to is basically the source of what you are looking for. The person you are talking to right now is sitting in front of you, is the source, is the author of the life. He is God himself. Are you aware of that? And shockingly, Jesus responds to his question, how people, person like me, how can I receive a eternal life? Jesus said, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. 
uh, of course, Jesus is not saying that you should already uh, 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 observe the law and then you can receive eternal life. No, that's not what Jesus meant. Ultimately, where is the eternal life coming from? It comes from the grace of God through faith. However, true obedience to the commandments comes from a heart that's very, very close to God. And therefore, your love for God will manifest, will express in following His commandment. That's what Jesus meant. And then the commandment that Jesus referred, recited, affects a person's relationship with, his, his, with others. And therefore, we can subsume that the command Jesus raised is to love your neighbor. Jesus is primarily concerned with that ruler, the young ruler's attitude toward his neighbor. Notice that the, 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 the ruler come with a selfish question that is about his own future security. But Jesus redirected his attention to others, which requires selflessness. Apparently that this ruler expressed his confidence, right? He lived a righteous life since he was a boy. He's no doubt thinking about his hour of observance of the law, right? Of the Mosaic law, keeping his letter, rather than a heart toward God, which is the true meaning of those commandments. He does not know that uh, where he stands of his uh, like a me measurable achievement in terms of this obedience scale. He thinks that he's going to pass with the flying colors. However, based on his pursuing of this question, he must feel that something is still missing. Otherwise, he wouldn't pursue this issue with Jesus. Then, Jesus dropped a bunch out. Jesus gave him a series of imperatives, three commands. Sell everything, give to the poor, and come follow me. When this man heard this, he became very, very sad because he was rich. Now in this book, in his book, Poet and Peasant, through Peasant Eye, the theological professor Kenneth Bailey, that he commented this. He said, if Jesus has given the ruler a checklist of expensive good works to fund or to carry out, he may have begun them with a great enthusiasm. That Jesus asked too much of him. The rich man does not think that it's worth of the sacrifice because he believes that he has too much to give up. He was sad, hearing Jesus said, however, sadness does not always lead to repentance. Brothers and sisters, do you think that Jesus asked too much of him? Sell everything, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. Jesus lays open the ruler's saw and exposed the truth to him. Basically, he loves his riches more than he loved God. And then he was trusting them instead of trusting God, right? He does not love God with all his heart, soul, mind, strength. And on top of the line, he ignores the poor. Except that perhaps he said he followed the law, right? Perhaps uh, he gave us some kind of a token donations. His exceeding wealth is his law, not God. And then consequently, what? He has not kept the first and the foremost commandment that you should love God. You should trust in God. And second of all, you should have a self-giving love for the neighbors. As recorded in Matthew 22, 37 and to 40. Now, we, we need to realize that in a society, and that has very limited goods, and then when the majority of the people are third poor, when someone or some group has more, and that means others will inevitably have less. 
if this rich ruler has is truly following the commandments as he proclaimed, he is not going to be exceedingly rich, which the Bible describes he is. Now, suppose there are two doors in front of you. You can choose only one. When you enter one, you are at a point of no return, and then you cannot get back to the other one. On the left side, the door entering, if you choose the left door, it enters into money, power, and fame. And on the right is the door entering into eternal relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. You will inherit God's kingdom, but your life on earth will be shaped, will be molded by the Holy Spirit. Pains, difficulties may involve. Which door would you choose? In a sense, these are what the young ruler were facing at that time when he asked Jesus Christ. However, this young ruler, this rich ruler, he wants to serve both God and Maimon. But that is not possible. Just like here, the two doors, you can only choose one. Maimon is an Aramaic term. It probably comes from a root meaning that the things that people trust, things that people trust like a wealth and like a property. So let me ask you this question again, which I asked earlier, does Jesus ask too much of him? To sell everything and give it to the poor. Think about this. Realize this. If his wealth becomes his God, then the answer is no. No, Jesus is not asking too much of him. Jesus is trying to save him and then give him eternal life. He must separate all ties to mammon if he has the hope of eternal life. That was what is at stake. Because discipleship demands loyalty to God alone. Brothers and sisters, let's reflect, reflect on this our, ourselves. What is the mammon of your life that prevents you from following Jesus Christ? Is it my property? Or is it my prestige? Is that this my little comfortable world that I wouldn't give up? or my comfortable lifestyle, or even my sinful habits, my self-centeredness, my perfectionism, my busyness, or my lack of trust. Think about this. And I want to bring out to the second characteristic, true discipleship may be costly. Then Jesus used a hyper hyperbole to bring home the danger of wealth. Notice that the eye of a needle is the smallest opening imaginable. Okay? And then the camel was the largest animal in Palestine. No wonder the bystander was startled because the image conveys what? It is almost impossible for the rich to be saved. These people, these people assume that someone so rich like this young ruler, they were so outwardly pious, must be favored by God. And if the highly favored are excluded from the reign, from the reign of God, from the kingdom of God, then who else can be saved? Jesus' answer is a generalized statement, not just the super rich, but everyone. Listen, none can be saved through his or, home or, or, or her own efforts. It is through God's grace that one is safe. That was Jesus' answer. The imperatives, the commands that Jesus gave to the rich young ruler, in fact, form one confinement, a commandment to give up one's own life and then to live holy for God. And this is not just applied to that young ruler, to a wealthy ruler, it's, uh, it applies to everyone. Because that is nothing new. 
Jesus has met the requirements of discipleship and eternal life earlier before. In Luke 14, verse 33, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you, you, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Jesus has set that requirement to be a disciple of him. And therefore, this brings out the second characteristics of discipleship. True discipleship may be costly to the disciple and then to those who are around him or her. The encounter of a rich ruler underscored a requirement. Jesus also insists this with another hyperbole. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father, and the mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life. Such a person cannot be my disciples. And then whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciples. Luke chapter 14, verses 26 and 27. Boy, this is a very difficult passage, right? And it's coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the word to hate here, it is a Semitic or Jewish expression. It conveys this preference one over the other. And therefore, to hate basically means to love less than. You know, it's a preference one over the other. Commitment to Jesus Christ must supersede allegiance to family and clan. So if you do not love your family, and friends, you claim more than Jesus Christ. You cannot uh, be his disciples. Remember, Jesus wants us to take care of our family. He's referring to your heart, your allegiance, the priority of your life. To call the call to discipleship is a gift of grace. This is a costly grace from God. Why? Because it costs his son's life. And unfortunately, Christians often have this concept and that we take God's grace lightly because it's free. German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he referred it as a cheap grace. In his, in his book, The Cost of a Discipleship, he says this, quote, cheap grace is the preaching of a forgiveness without requiring repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without confession, absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is the grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. On the contrary, on the contrary, it is the costly grace, he says. It is the call of Jesus Christ at the which the disciple leaves his net and then follow him. Such grace is costly because it calls us to follow. And it is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It is costly because it costs a man and his life. It is grace because it gives a man the only true life. It is costly because it condemns sins in grace because it justifies the sinners. Above all, it is costly because it costs the life of the Son of God. Brother and sister, you were brought with a price. First Corinthians six verses first first Corinthians chapter six verse twenty. And therefore, brothers and sisters, if you pursue something that costs you nothing, is it really worth pursuing? If you pursue something with a true value, then you pay the price like what Jesus Christ did for our life, for our salvation, and then like all his followers did to follow him. 
if you're willing to do that, God can use you, can use your sacrifice to achieve great things. Be serving others and making a difference in somebody else's life. Every Thursday, um, Thursday evening, a man of men of fellowship get together to discuss this book, Experiencing God. And in last week's discussion, the cause of following Jesus Christ was the topic. The author of a book wrote a memorial of missionary Hassan Taylor. It is about his bidding farewell to his mother. He was about to sell to China. It will be about six months of selling on the boat, and he recorded that moment. Think about this. If you are Hudson Taylor, your father is dead, and you realize that, that you may never see your mother again on earth, then listen to this. Uh, this uh, his account of um, when he and his mom part away, uh, and, and try to imagine the emotion uh, they must felt at that time. Let me read. My beloved, my beloved, now sainted mother, had come to see me off from Liverpool. Never shall I forget that day, nor how she went with me into the little cabin that was to be my home for the coming six long months. With a mother's loving hand, she smoothed the little bed. She sat by my side and then joined me in the last hymn that we should sing together before the long parting. We knelt together and she prayed. The last mother's prayer I was to hear before starting for China. The notice was given that we must separate and then we had to say goodbye, never expecting to meeting each other again. For my sake, she restrained her feelings as much as possible. We parted, and she went on shore, giving me her blessings. I stood alone on deck, and she followed the ship as we moved toward the dock gates. As we passed through the gates, and then the separation really commenced. I shall never forget the cry of anguish wrung from my mother's heart. It went through me like a knife. I never knew so fully until then what God so loved the world meant. And I am quite sure that my precious mother learned more of the love of God to the perishing people in that hour than in all her life before. Praise God, the number is increasing who are finding out the exceeding joy, the wondrous revelation of His mercies, vouchsafed to those who follow Him and emptying themselves, live all in obedience to His great commission. The discipleship, true discipleship, is costly. But those who are willing to pay the price can be used by Him to be blessing for many, many, many people. And then today here, many Chinese owe Him, Hassan Taylor, for His sacrifice. And that generations, many generations have gone by and then that the gospel was passed on to China and then passed on to Taiwan and then now Hassan Taylor V continued to carry on the torch, continued to be exemplary of what it means to be disciple of Jesus Christ. And number three, true discipleship promised great rewards. Peter said to Jesus, we have left all that we had to follow you. Now Peter's affirmation reveals uh, the truth, right? That the disciples uh, have really shown their commitment you know, by abandoning everything and follow Jesus Christ, right? Then Jesus' answer speaks about their future promise 
uh, and then that future promise is rooted on the present commitment and in the practices. The future promise is rooted in the present commitment and practices. And I just want to bring your attention that receiving many times back is not to be taken literally, right? As, especially in the case of uh, 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 brothers and sisters and family members. It reflects the reality of a new community because of our faith, because we are willing to follow Jesus Christ. We are going to be part of a love community, the body of Christ, and that is the church. All believers stand together as one family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And any, fam any Christians who has experienced this fellowship and hospitality of the fellow, of a fellow believer in some kind of remote corner of the world, they understand what Jesus meant. And in that it is our blessings to have this big community of a faith. In the present age, although the blessings of salvation are already present, they are, there's also not yet. And Jesus' followers must be prepared to suffer as we are waiting and as Jesus did. Yet, the certainty of this ultimate reward, eternal life in the ages to come, should provide a comfort and then a consolation to us. The promise is given, but it depends on our current commitment and in our practices. Now, in Brother Eric's commissioning uh, ceremony, uh, which many of us attended online, Rear Admiral Jamie Sands, Commander of the Navy Service Training Command, he addressed the graduating naval officers and asked, how many of you decided to go through ROTC and join Navy and Marine Corps because you are looking for an easy life? He said, I cannot see your hands, but, and that is a bit of a ridiculous question, right? He asked. In the profession of arms, we don't offer easy. We just offer hard. And immediately he asked another question. He said, how many of you decide to join ROTC and then become an officer of a Navy and a Marine Corps because you want to live a life of significance? Oh, the good news is that for you is that, yes, if that's your decision, we can deliver. If you're not looking for easy, if you want to serve as a part of something bigger than yourself, and if you want to live a life of significance, define it as a life that you can positively impact and then shape the life of others, you are in the right place. You are in the right place. Today, and you have to make the good decision Today, you have made a good decision. Well, going forward, you get to decide what kind of officer you want to become. You want to become. Commander sends a dressing. And then now, let me also ask all of you who are watching this video, who are joining our Sunday service, I want to ask you, how many of you have decided to follow Jesus Christ because he can make you rich and he can offer you easy life? Well, if you read the Bible carefully, if you understand that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many, if you understand that this is a narrow road, if you understand that what his disciples went through for following him, that you will say that this is a ridiculous question, ridiculous question too. Now, next question is, how many of you decide to follow Jesus Christ because you want the eternal relationship with Him? 
because you want to be part of the kingdom of God, because you are willing to deny, to deny yourself and carry up the cross daily and follow Him, because you are willing to be shaped, to be molded by the Holy Spirit, so that you can be used by Him to make a difference on other people's life. I'm pretty sure there are a few hands raising out there. If not, if it is in your heart, you want to raise your hand. Well, that's your decision. You make that decision. Then going forward, you cannot serve the Lord and an amendment at the same time. Because you have made that decision. You have only one Lord, and that is Jesus Christ who is the highest priority of your life, and you show allegiance to Him. Remember His promises of His disciples. In short, the nature of a discipleship is the single-minded obedience. Trust that Jesus' word is my ultimate security, and in having Jesus is having everything. Do you? Believe it not, having Jesus is having everything. The choice is given to the young ruler is a yes or no, very simple choice, and his answer is no. There have been many friends of mine who come in and they walk out in this church. Some of them were even baptized, but they left the church and they never come back. When truly confronted with the eternal decision, do you want to Jesus Christ with a single-minded obedience for the rest of your life? Some people just walk away. And then if you have already made the right decision, be aware, discipleship, true discipleship means soul allegiance to God alone. True discipleship may be costly. However, true discipleship promises eternal blessings. There's blessings that already happened, and then there are blessings yet to come. At the end, I want to invite you to contemplate, to be reflective. What is the mammon? of your life, what is the things that you totally depend on that prevent you from following Jesus Christ alone? Anything that replaces God's supreme position in your life is your mammon. This is a question that worth contemplating until our decision is made, to follow Him or not. We all have to answer this question sooner or later. May God help all of us to make the right decision, and not only that, will follow with commitment and in the rightful practices. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your antithetical, your anti-cultural calling, and that we ought to give up everything to follow you. Although we understand that you want us to take you as the supreme giving you the supreme position in our life. And then sometimes it may also involve with the true sacrifices of our life. It may be costly to us, and it may be costly to those who are around us. Because it is a costly grace. And for this grace, you lost the life of your son, Jesus Christ. And then we who are following you, oh Lord, it is a privilege, Lord. Help us not to be afraid. Help us and not to be insecure and help us to make this decision that we want to follow Jesus Christ and enter into the eternal relationship with Him and in the eternity that we're going to share with the, we, we're going to share the, the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's our decision, we know it involves with the cause. But that cause when compared with the eternal glory, is nothing. Help our brother and sister to make a wise decision, a decision that has eternal value. If there are any of us who is pursuing 
the worldly thing. And let these things will take over your position in our life. Lord, I pray that, that you will speak to them. You cause them, you stir up their heart to contemplate if this is something that we do not need, that does not cost us anything. Is that a true significant thing for us to pursue? Thank you for your word. Continue to guide us in our decision-making process. And for those who have already made the decision, guide us to walk on the path of commitment, walk on the path of following our Lord Jesus Christ as our only goal of life. And I pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Did our worship um, with offering. I want to report to you that uh, the collecting of uh, building fund um, up to yesterday uh, is already exceeded a hundred thousand dollars, and it was the matching uh, totally. Uh, now we have uh, two hundred thousand dollars. We praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, it, 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 
it's a, it's it's worth a yeah a, 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 a yay. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it was. Um, God has already provided us exceedingly beyond our imagination, uh, because it, it is His work. And then today is a, a, a May thirty first is last day that we collect. Uh, uh, the it's a matching deadline basically. In June we'll continue uh, to to offer for this purpose. Um, and then uh, during this pandemic situation that uh, many people are, are impacted financially, so uh, I, I want to let you know that you have the heart to participate, but please don't feel obligated and, 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 and don't even feel uh, this unnecessary guilt for you not, not being able to participate, right? Because we are part, each one of us that we are part of the body of Christ, we can contribute that different thing that God has blessed us with, right? The resources, the time, the energy, and, and some money, yeah. So, um, I just want to uh, share that, that information with you all. And then uh, the next thing is that, that is, is the prayers. The prayer request is that our church leaders and they will have the wisdom to decide how to use the fund. Okay, and then because they are our our church building, we there we actually have a various need. Um, the English worship place, um, the lack of classroom for youth, and then for uh, our children, and then our children's background is now in a, to a to a degree that is no longer safe for our children to play there. Uh, there are so many different needs. And then there are priorities there. So let's can please continue to pray so our church leaders will have the wisdom in you know, how to prioritize the need and then to use the money wisely. Let's go to the Lord with thanksgiving and then with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offering. And then you are pleased with the cheerful giver. And thank you for abundantly providing us so that we have a capability um, to help out and then to support the church's need, to support the church's, particularly the building project. Lord, thank you for the offering we have already collected. Lord, may you bless, remember everyone who contributed. Lord, you know who they are. And then may their heart be rejoiced because of being able to participate. And then for those who can have the heart but cannot participate, Lord, you come for them. And then because you know, you, you, you have been telling us and that we can, you, you examine our heart, you, what you care is our heart. It's, it's not the, the sacrifices. Uh, you, you, you care more about our heart. And for, so may those who contribute financially, may those who contribute different things and cheer, can cheer together in your grace. And then continue to guide these uh, building projects, um, again, and making the right decision. So what ended up, what we did, what we spent money on, can really benefit the ministry and then benefit people's life. We thank you for this week's offering. May you consecrate it and use them for your kingdom glory. And I pray all of these in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. A few quick announcements. Uh, and today, you might be noticed that our video, our worship video, is a little bit different. Uh, we try to put in, uh, we put in the subtitles. Hopefully, that's easier for you to follow and then to sing along with us. Uh, it is our, a continuous effort that we're just trying to make uh, this uh, online worship better and better every time. And then that requires some uh, more uh, uh, human power, you know, to put all of these things together. So if you are willing, now we record on, set, on Saturdays. We most, of, for the most part, we record on Thursday at the 4 p.m., right? So we can finish um, within two hours. And if you can help us do, to do some post-production, like uh, putting the video frame together and then putting subtitles, uh, if you can volunteer your time. Earlier I was talking about being offering uh, contributing, being contributing in di using different aspects of, of your resource and, 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 and energy and, and, and skills, right? So this is one of it. So if you can help, us, help out in that, in that regard, that I like to ask a, a group of volunteers so we can take turn. And, and, then, and then, so you won't like a, uh, become a huge burden on, on just one individual, okay? 
So that is that. Uh, if you can help out the uh, post production of video, let me know. Um, and don't worry about the tools that, that if you don't have it, uh, we will try to provide. And number two, that the church currently has decided that uh, we will have online worship until the end of June. However, the deacon board will soon, the council board will soon discuss uh, to come up with a process that gradually inviting brothers and sisters to come back. Instead of the entire church come back on the same Sunday, now we probably cannot do that, that's not wise either. We will gradually open up so a few people who come in and observe strict, uh, strict process, very strict process of a social distancing. thing. So we can gradually have people come in here to this sanctuary and then we can worship together face to face and then with a very, very uh, important uh, safety measure. Okay, so uh, just stay tuned. Uh, maybe before the end of June, we might be able to start inviting brother and sister to kind of gradually come back. And this applies to all three services. And then lastly, after this uh, worship, welcome you to join uh, Sunday School. Uh, today that we have a Pastor Peter lead us uh, this topic, the apostolic lives of Peter and John. And surveying the life of Apostle Peter and John. And I trust that, that we can learn greatly uh, in this uh, Sunday School. And this is because we are, uh, this is the fifth Sunday, and so that's why we break off from uh, our uh, apologetic series. Okay, and with that, I'd like to invite you, if you can, uh, and stand up, receive benediction. If you cannot, uh, just open your palm as a way of receiving, and that is fine. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love from our Heavenly Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be richly with each one of us, from now on until eternity. Amen.